Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are getting back into layers, layers, layers. Uh, now, I'm a little bit excited about this video because I'm going to show you some important uh, tools that will allow you to manipulate your layers in special ways, and, and I think these tools are are kind of important to uh, to understand because they will increase your efficiency when working with layers immensely. Uh, particularly, the first one I'm going to show you is the show active layer only function. And uh, from from hanging out in the forums a lot, I, I'm kind of aware that this is a function that many people don't know about. And uh, it's an important function. And, and sort of once you know about it, it kind of changes your your uh, your perspective of, of dealing with layers in Finale. So I thought it'd be worth uh, touching on that a bit to uh, to make sure that uh, you all know about that because it, it will help immensely. Now the show active layer only option is in the document options and it's about halfway down and it's right here it's called show active layer only and what this will do is it will literally when you check it it will literally just show the active layer and in this case I've got layer one active so it's only showing layer one and it's hiding all the other layers two three and four if I were to make active uh, layer two active you'll see that only layer two will show and it will hide layer one three and four essentially now I don't have anything in layer three, so you're just going to see empty mar measures. Same thing with layer four, right? All right, and uh, this is uh, effectively the layer filter for Finale, right? Because if we go to the actual filter, the edit uh, filter, um, in this window, there's there's nothing that about layers in here, right? So uh, essentially, the layer filter is actually this show active layer only, and when we have that engaged, essentially we can manipulate all of these notes and, and elements from this layer without affecting the other layers. That's the magic of the show active layer only function. And I'm gonna show you some practical uses for this right off the bat. And uh, hopefully uh, once I show you a few, you'll, you'll kind of get the hang of it and you'll be able to use it um, uh, completely efficiently. So for example, in a situation like this, if I have this tenor sax part, these two tenor sax parts, and I want to get rid of one of them only, and let's say I want to get rid of the, the first one, tenor sax one, it, you know, obviously if I were to press delete, it would, it would delete both parts, which is not what we want. So again, if we're in layer one, choose show active layer only, and then press delete. And then when you uncheck that, you'll see that layer two still exists there, right? Again, it's the layer filter, essentially, all right? Uh, same thing with uh, applying articulations. Now we know that we can, uh, with a meta key, just kind of drag articulations across a whole bunch of measures. But with the articulation tool, that will actually put, uh, you know, tenudos in this case on all the notes in both layers. Uh, in this case, what I really wanted to do was just put it on layer two. So if layer two is active and we show active layer only and we do the same thing with the E, you'll see that it will put the two new nodes just on layer two and ignore layer one, right? Um, we can also remove specific items in this manner as well. Like if I wanted to get rid of these accents in the piano part only on layer two, again, if I were to use the edit filter, or not the edit filter, the, the clear uh, selected items function and clear articulations, it would clear both uh, layer one and layer two articulations. But if I only wanted to clear Layer two, again, make sure layer two is active, show active layer only, edit, clear selected items, none, articulations, right? And now the articulations are gone in layer two, but they will remain in layer one. Our two new nodes are still there, right? We can also use the copy and paste filter with this. So if I wanted to put this, the layer two slurs from the first two measures in the, the second pair of measures here, I can do that. However, Again, if I were to use the edit filter um, and showing both of these layers, it would also move these slurs. But if I only wanted to move the layer two slurs, I'd have to use show active layer only. Again, we can go to edit filter, uh, none. In this case, we're looking for smart shapes assigned to notes. Click OK, copy, paste. And you'll see that it only put the slurs on the layer two, right? So it ignored this layer one slur because that layer one was not showing when I did that, right? Um, <coughs> we can also do other things like change the note size of only one layer. Like if I want this trumpet two part, for example, to just be a Q uh, instead of actual notes, again, just use the show active layer only. And now we can choose uh, utilities, change note size, change it to 75%, click OK. And you'll see that uh, only layer two will now be Q notes, right? Layer one will uh, remain uh, where it is. 
And even things like transposing notes, you know, just something as simple as transposing notes. If I wanted, let's say, um, these two bars in the piano here, if I wanted just the layer two notes to go a, a, an octave higher and leave the layer one notes there, right? Layer two is active, show active layer only. Press nine, and that gets transposed, but layer one does not. <coughs> and of course, we get a cross situation, which I'm gonna show you how to fix in one minute. All right, so, and obviously there's there's a ton of other things that you can you can do uh, with the show active layer only. Your imagination is really the, the limit there. So, uh, you know, that's just a few things, but uh, once you get the hang of it, um, you'll be able to do a lot of stuff. The second tool that's worth mentioning is the move copy layers function. Now, this will do exactly what it, you think it would. This is the way that we're going to move notes from one layer to another layer. So in the case of the tenor sax part here, again, if we select those, the move copy layers is in the edit menu. It's about halfway down, it says move slash copy layers. And this dialog box comes up here and we have two options. We can either move or copy, right? So when we have move selected, what we're doing is moving contents of layer one into two, or we can choose two into one, three into four, and actually we can change any of these. So we can basically put you know, the contents of layer one into any other layer, the contents of layer two into any other layer, and we could do one at a time, two or three at a time, whatever we need to do in terms of moving uh, certain notes into other layers. In this case, what we wanna do is move the contents of layer two back into, the, into layer one, right? So that's set up and we click okay and you'll see that it moved from two to one. Easy as that, right? And again, we can even uh, choose two of them. So in this case, you know, now that I've got these notes crossed in this piano part, we may want to actually use the move copy layers to do two things here, move contents of layer one into layer two, but also move contents of layer two into layer one. And we, when we click okay, it will do just that, all right? Now I, I did this on purpose for with these measures because it does cause a little bit of a problem. You'll see in this measure, the, uh, the spacing gets screwed up. And unfortunately, this is a, a little bit of an error with this particular function. And I wanted to just show you how to fix this because I'm, I'm here and I might as well. Uh, there's two ways to do it, actually. The first is in the MIDI audio uh, menu here. There's an option called retranscribe that you can use. And you just have to be careful about this because this will um, uh, destroy any markings. And you'll see what happens. It will reset it back to the, spa the original spacing, but the markings will go away. There is a better way to do this with a third-party plugin. In fact, it's a JW plugin. If you don't have the JW plugins, by the way, I highly recommend that you go to their website, which I'm gonna post at the bottom of this video right now, and download their uh, plugins because they're free and they're amazing and they're uh, an incredibly useful too. That's the JW plugins. And the one I'm concerned about right now is the JW plugin, um, what's it called? Oh, sorry, it's a JW change plugin. And uh, this cha JW change plugin, by the way, is an enormous plugin. You can change all kinds of things, and it, it's there's a lot to explore here. But the one we're concerned about is in note entries, and we're looking for clear position. And actually, we can clear all positioning of all kinds of things here. But in this case, we just want to clear all positionings, and hit apply, and you'll see that it, it fixes that. All right. And then uh, finally, I, I did want to caution you about that moving layers thing. You know, if you have a situation like this and you choose move copy layers, and let's say you only choose to move contents of layer two into layer one, you know, obviously there's material in layer one. So when you press OK in this situation, you're going to get a warning sign that says this action will overwrite existing data. Select OK to continue. Now, occasionally this may be useful, but just be aware that this is what's going to happen. When you click OK, the layer two notes are going to move to layer one and all those other notes are going to disappear, right? Um, again, so it just depends on, on what you need to do in, uh, in any given situation, all right? And so that's the move layers. And then finally, the copy layers. Um, this is uh, probably not um, used as often, but there are some uses for it. So, for example, in this alto sax part, these first two measures, if I've decided that, you know, I, I want to show these notes as split stem up and down, I can actually use the edit uh, move copy layers for this if I just copy contents of layer one into layer two, and you'll see what happens. It does it just that. It puts an exact copy into layer two. So that's one way to do that, all right? 
The next tool that I want to show you is, is going to be handy when you're dealing with uh, uh, split layers uh, like, a, like I have in the, in the piano part here um, where rests are concerned. Now, I, I mentioned in the previous video that when you have layers in a uh, notes in opposing layers like this, the rests will float. And the, what f the way the finale handles is this, this is that the rests will float six steps above the center line or six steps below the center line for layer two, above for layer one. And these positions are fixed. They're not dynamic, so they're not going to move up and down depending on, you know, where the notes are in the other layers and whatnot, which is sort of unfortunate. It would be nice if they, if they were a little bit dynamic, but they are absolutely fixed at plus and minus six steps. Um, and occasionally that, that leaves us with situations like this where the rests are not really in ideal situations. Like in this particular case, it might be better to have the eighth rests actually where they're supposed to be in the center of the uh, staff, right? There is a plugin, and this is a uh, native finale plugin in the note beam and rest editing. There, just about halfway down, there's something called move rests, <coughs> and this uh, this dialog box here will allow you to choose which rests you want to move. You can choose all the layers or just a single layer. In this case, what we want to do is move the rests in layers one. Now, again, I said that the the uh, the floating rests are six and minus six steps. The layer one is a positive six steps higher position, right? So if we actually move the rest minus six, it will put it back to zero and put it back to the center line, all right? And there are other times where you may not want to go totally to the center line, like in these two bars. Maybe I want to move those down, but just a little bit. Again, we can use the move rests. And instead of negative six, we could say negative two, for example. And we'll see what that does. It'll make it a little bit lower, but not quite in the center, right? Um, and there is an option there <coughs> in that plugin to reset all of this. So go back to move rests, clear manual positioning. We'll do exactly that. It'll put all of those rests back to their original floating position of plus six uh, spaces, right? And there's also a, a couple sub options there. That let me just show you in this in this drum part. You notice that I have an empty measure. Now this is a uh, a bar rest here. It's not a real whole rest. Uh, hopefully you're aware of the difference between the two you know a, a whole rest would actually be something that's like a, an actual thing right there that you could delete and everything but an, a bar rest is just an empty bar showing a rest there right um, so in that move rests plugin go back to that if we were to move the layer one rest down uh, negative two again there's this option to create a movable real rest in empty measures because we can't actually move a, a, a non-real rest, right? So it would have to create one and then move it. So with that checked, it's doing just that. And you'll see that the now this is a real whole rest that got moved down two spaces. And there's also a sub option in the clear manual positioning that will actually just completely undo that. So if we erase the shifted real whole rest entirely, it will do just that with that checked. And that will go away, and this becomes a bar rest again and not an actual real rest. All right, so that's what that, uh, those uh, sub options are. And finally, as you can begin to see, you know, when you, when you start to combine some of these tools, you, you can uh, really do some, some nifty things if, if you're creative about it and, uh, and, uh, and you know what you want to do. And in fact, I'm going I'm to walk you through a process that I do quite often um, because I think, I, I think it's worth seeing that how flexible something like this can be. So um, oftentimes I'll be in a situation like this with the piano and the bass, and I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know what, I don't want the piano to be playing these bass notes. Uh, what I'd rather see in the left hand of the piano is I, I'd rather see a cued version of the bass line in the left hand of the piano, right? So the w you know, there's two ways that I can do this. I, I can actually just delete all of the layer two notes and then start entering the bass notes in layer two or whatever. But uh, I'm going to show you a quicker way to do this. And this will be quicker, obviously, when there's more measures. Like if I had 32 bars or something, this would be really quick to do it this way. Um, and this is going to combine a few things. So the first thing I'm going to do is go make layer two active, show active layer. And I'm just going to delete those layer two notes. Right? And again, those layer one notes will remain. Right, And what I'm going to do in the bass line here is I'm going to move layer one into layer four, okay? This is just temporary, because you're gonna see what I'm gonna do here. Now I'm gonna make layer four active. Again, I'm gonna go to show active layer only, and I'm gonna copy this into the piano part. 
and without the filter on. There we go. And now I'm done with the base part, so just I'm going to move that back to from four into one just to get that back to normal. Okay. And again, you, if you remember in the other video, I, I discussed the difference between layers two and la layer one and two and layer three and four, in that layer three and four will not <coughs> uh, move their stems or, or flip their stems when multiple layers are present, right? So in this case, what we want to do is with layer four active only, you can actually choose those and uh, use utilities. There's a, a stem direction option here. Choose down, which will uh, freeze them all down. And now you'll see that the uh, layer four is down and layer one is up. And layer one is up, by the way, because the option actually says uh, freeze stems up when uh, notes are present in any layer, essentially. It doesn't have to be layer two in this particular case, right? Um, so that's why the, the stem, the uh, layer one notes are still going up, right? Despite that there's no layer two, there's a layer four, so it's still going up. All right, and then finally, uh, again, I still have layer four active, show active layer only, and I'm going to show you that other thing that I did, change note size to 75%, so that these are now Q notes, and undo show active layer only. And you can see that in just a few steps with just a, a couple, you know, selections made and a couple options uh, chosen that we can actually, you know, do something with this without actually having to go through and re-entering all of these um, notes in layer four in the piano and everything. You know, if, if you're creative about using these tools, it, it's, it's a pretty quick way to, to, to get around and do some stuff like that, all right? And finally, one final thing I'm going to show you, uh, because I think it's useful, it's one other JW plugin that's going to do something specific for us uh, regarding layers. And I'm looking at specifically at a situation like this in the alto sax part, where I have the alto saxes sharing notes in the same layer. And uh, for, if for whatever reason, I want to split those into two layers. Um, there is no native way in Finale, there's no native plugin in Finale to do this, unfortunately. However, there is one in the JW set, and this one is actually the JW Staff Polyphony uh, plugin, which is down here. And uh, the one we're concerned about is concerning layers, and this is the split. And again, just th these these are having these checks is fine. Press apply, and you'll see that it split those two note chords into um, into uh, into two layers, right? Uh, so that's a handy tool. I, w I wish there was a, a native way to do that in Finale, but that JW Staff Polyphony plugin will uh, will take care of that immediately. There's another part of that plugin that I thought was worth showing you too, and uh, occasionally you might come into something like this where instead of using Layer 2, uh, the, the person writing it used Voice 2 instead, and, and what you want to do is change those to Layer 2. In the same plugin, this, the uh, JW Staff Polyphony plugin, right below that split option, there's split from voices, which is going to do exactly that. So it's going to split uh, those voices into layers one and two, right? And actually for this particular function, there is a native plugin. So you don't have to have that JW plugin to do that particular uh, function. Just choose note, beam, and rest editing, which is the uh, native finale plugins. Go down to voice two to layer and the simple box will appear and it's going to say move notes in voice 2 of layer from layer 1 into layer 2 right and when you click okay it will do the same thing as that jw plugin essentially right so oddly there's a native way to do this one um, but uh, unfortunately there's no native way to uh, uh, split the the chords in in this manner but uh, that jw staff polyphony plugin will do that for you all right uh, so I think that's where I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been a, a helpful uh, video and you've learned some neat tricks um, in uh, manipulating your layers. So uh, come back. The next video I'm going to do, we're gonna, I'm going to show you some stuff about muting and hiding layers. And that will be exciting as well. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.